Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be going over this problem, and so with that, let's read it. So the bell crank system shown in the figure below, which is right beside here actually, is attached to a horizontal spring BC from here to here with stiffness K equals 2 kilonewtons meters and a pin support at point A. Spring BC is unstretched when angle theta equals zero and the bell crank is in equilibrium under the effect of an external force F when angle theta equals 15. And this is our theta here. If spring BC remains in a horizontal position at all times due to the roller at C, where the roller at C is this guy which is attached to the spring, determine the following when the crank is in equilibrium. The change in the length of the spring BC when the crank rotates about point A or and the angle theta goes from 0 to 15 and the resulting force in the spring FS. The horizontal and vertical support reactions at pin A when the angle when the angle theta is 15. Okay, so whenever we see one of these problems, the first things that we want to do is draw a free body diagram, and we're going to draw a stretched and unstretched version of this boomerang type object here, and the reason for that is because it's asking us for the change in length, so it's probably a good idea to have a before and after picture. Uh, so to speak, of each of those uh, unstretched and stretched states. And so I've pre-made some here, which I'll just pull up now. And so here is the unstretched state, unstretched. And here is the stretched state, right? Okay, and so what we're going to need to do now is determine that determine the change in length of the spring. And so the way that we can do that is with trig because when this boomerang type thing is uh, pulled down, this uh, arm here is also gonna be uh, moved closer to the right. And so that's going to uh, stretch the spring and I've drawn the spring very crudely here. And so as you can see, the spring has elongated and that uh, has been proportional to the change in angle here. And so you may say, wow, like I don't really know how to do that, but think about what you know. And what you know how to do, or should know by now at least, is how to do trig. And so uh, with that, we can actually calculate the angle that this arm here this, I'll just outline it in blue kind of, that this arm here moved towards the right. And with that knowledge, we can say that the angle that this arm moved is equal to the change um, in the stretch, right? And so with that, you're gonna say, okay, but the only angle I have is 150 and I can't really use that in trig. And I'm gonna say, well, you were also given this 15 degrees. So we can label this angle as 15 degrees. And then in addition, because this is 15 degrees, we can also write this as 45 degrees because we can do 150 minus 15. And then this angle here between the axes is, of course, 90 minus 90 gives us 45, right? And so using all of that, we know that is for 45. And then we also know that this must be 45. And of course, this is just a sketch, so you know this angle here is obviously smaller than this angle here, but don't worry about that because it's just a sketch. And so I'm just going to clear some of this away so that we're clean. And so here, obviously, the angle that we've compressed is zero degrees um, because it's completely parallel to the x axis. And so what we're going to say now is that because that's zero degrees, this angle is 150, which means that this, that because this angle is 90, this angle here is going to be 60. And because this is 60 and this is going to be 90 on this side as well, this is going to be 30 degrees. And so um, that's just kind of what I like to do, you know, sketch out all the possible angles I can know. And then from there, Hopefully we can do some trig, and it turns out that we can. And so the other really important equation that you're going to need to know is that the force of the spring is equal to k, the spring constant, times the distance stretched. And because we're looking for x, we can, as I mentioned before, 
um, how we can infer what x is, the movement of this arm versus this arm, we can say that 300, oop, let me draw a better 3, 300 cos of 30, where this is the 30 we're talking about, because we're going to talk about this um, horizontal distance here and this horizontal distance here minus 300 cos 45 and so that's going to give us that x is equal to 47.67 millimeters and you may say, okay, I thought we always used meters, and you would be right most of the time, but because this is kilonewtons per meter, and because this is millimeters, uh, it's going to cancel, um, and so what we're actually going to get is millimeters for, this, uh, for these units, and you can work that out if you would like, um, but I'm just going to leave it at that for now out because when we do put in our x into here um, it'll cancel with the 1000 on the top divided by a thousand and so what we're gonna do then is have f of s equal to k which is 2 times 46.67 which is equal to 95.35 newtons as I pointed out because uh, those are going to cancel. And so I'm just going to clean up the board here a little bit. Okay, great. And so now we're all set up to use our three equations of equilibrium, which are that the moment of about any point on this body is going to be equal to zero, the sum of the forces in the x is going to be equal to zero, and the sum of the forces in the y is going to be equal to zero. And thinking about this, we should do the moment first, because uh, when you count the number of unknowns and knowns that we have in here, uh, we're going to have have to solve it using a system of equations because um, we have multiple unknowns in the x and the y. So that's a hint to us that we're going to need to eliminate some of those and the way that we can eliminate some of those is using moment because taking the moment about a point that forces are passing through means that those forces are applying zero moment and therefore we can focus on our other forces. And so uh, writing out the equation for moment, let's do the moment about point A because that's going to cancel out two forces versus doing it about B or D, and C will just be the same as B. So the sum of the moment about A is equal to zero, which is going to be equal to the force of the spring times the perpendicular distance to that force, which is going to be this distance here. So it makes sense, or actually this distance here. Um, because we're going to do it when the spring is uh, stretched because that's when the force applied is um, rather so we're using this diagram just to clarify is going to be 300 cos of 45 and then minus the force F here times 400 and then solving for this we're going to get that F is equal to 50.57 newtons. And so I know that um, you may say, okay, um, but how is that helping me get the horizontal and vertical support reactions? So I'm just going to um, finish up here with the part that we actually do that. And so here, what I'm going to say is that we take the sum of the force in the x, which is equal to zero, which is also equal to a in the x, minus f of s, minus f sine of 15, right? And so doing all of that, um, if we sub in what we know, we know f, right? We know this guy. We know the force of the spring. Uh, solving that will give us AX is equal to 108.4 newtons, right? And so we can clear this up. And then the final step, if you haven't caught on yet, is to do 
which is completely fine if you haven't, um, or sorry, is to do the sum of the forces in the y equaling to zero, which is equal to a in the y minus f cos of 15. And then, of course, we know f. So then solving for a in the y, we're going to get that a in the y is equal to 48.84 newtons. Great. And so that's pretty much all of the um, stuff that we need to do in this problem because we found uh, the support reactions and then we also found X when solving for the force of the spring. So that's it. Hope you guys found that useful and uh, good luck.